We've talked at length so far about heteroatom containing functional groups in which the heteroatoms are linked to one or more carbons, and we focused almost exclusively on oxygen and sulfur. Here we're going to turn our attention to nitrogen and the amines. Amines contain a central nitrogen atom linked to three carbon groups, which are saturated. And really the behavior of amines is defined by the presence of this lone pair here and the nucleophilicity and basicity of the nitrogen atom. The nitrogen atom of an amine is a great nucleophile, and we'll see this reactivity in a number of different contexts in this series of videos. Looking ahead a little bit, we're going to see the amines again in the context of the amino acids, where a primary amine functional group is a key part of every single amino acid. We'll also see amines in the context of carbohydrates, for example, within glycosylamines. And we'll see amine-type nitrogens in the nucleic acids, and specifically their nitrogenous bases. So although we'll restrict our attention to laboratory chemistry for the most part here, we'll be able to draw analogies between the laboratory reactions we see here and biochemical reactions that we'll see in the future. Amines, which we might abbreviate as NR3, contain three alkyl groups or hydrogens linked to an sp3 hybridized nitrogen atom. And these have to be alkyl groups because if this is unsaturated, for example, a double or triple bond, that functional group has a different name. The nitrogen atom is an excellent nucleophile and a pretty decent base. The pKa of the conjugate acid of an amine, an ammonium ion, is about 10. And these find themselves stronger than ethers because nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, right? But certainly weaker than alkoxides, which have a negative charge. Now, amines are typically drawn with three solid lines to the R groups like this, and this seems to imply a trigonal planar geometry. This doesn't really jive with Vesper theory, right? We should expect amines to have a pyramidal geometry just based on rudimentary Vesper theory, since the nitrogen has four electron groups around it, and one of those involves a non-bonding lone pair. And the fact is, the amino nitrogen does have pyramidal geometry. If we take a snapshot of a particular molecule containing an amine functional group, we will see pyramidal geometry. However, that geometry can flip very rapidly through a process called nitrogen inversion. And this is so rapid with such a low activation barrier that on the average, the nitrogen appears to be planar. This is why we don't talk about stereogenic pyramidal nitrogen atoms and amines either. Although it is true that if we had three different R groups here, let's call them A, B, and C, and this molecule lacked a plane of symmetry, it would be chiral and the nitrogen would be stereogenic. The interconversion between these two pyramidal forms of the amine is so rapid that we're not able to resolve either of these would-be enantiomers. And in that situation, assuming each of these R groups is itself a chiral, lacks stereocenters, this planar form would be a chiral due to the plane of the screen being a plane of symmetry. And so the moral of the story ultimately is that amine nitrogens cannot be stereogenic for our purposes. An important nomenclature system for amines involves the number of alkyl groups connected to the nitrogen. When only one alkyl group is connected to the nitrogen, we call that amine primary. When two alkyl groups are linked to the amino nitrogen, we call that secondary. And when three alkyl groups are linked to the nitrogen, we call that tertiary. And of course, the number of R groups is related to things like the steric environment of the amino nitrogen. It gets more crowded as we go from primary to secondary to tertiary. And this also relates to the basicity and the nucleophilic strength of the lone pair on nitrogen. Since, since each of these alkyl groups is inductively donating, we should expect, roughly speaking, the basicity of the amino nitrogen to increase going from primary to secondary to tertiary amines.